Hello everybody and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's gonna be time for a new campaign. We're we'll gonna be playing some Victoria 2. We're we'll playing some Victoria 2 here today with the Concert of Europe mod. And we're gonna be playing as the United States with the goal to form the Confederate States of America. Let's go and jump on into the single player. Let's see. Concert of Europe, 1st of September 1821. This is our bookmark. Come over here. This is the U.S. This is the United States in the year 1821. Uh, Napoleon has died, but his legacy still shakes Europe. The empires of the Americas are shattered, and the empires of Europe hear the first rumbles in a gathering storm of nationalism. The event of Congress that brought the Napoleonic Wars to an end was meant to restore the old monarchical order, but the concert of balanced powers it sought to establish is already looking precarious. Whichever nations can seize this moment will dominate in a new age. So, we're going to play as the United States. We are 10th in the world. We are second power, or secondary power. We're the United States of America. We are a democracy, which means we're a republic. We have a republican form of government. Uh, we've got a population of about 2.49 million people, which is actually quite a bit. 43% uh, farmers, 7% artisans, 16% slaves, 29% laborers. Uh, let's see. And 4% other, apparently. We have about 1% soldiers. Okay, so we're going to play as the uh, United States. I've actually never played as the United States in Victoria 2. I've never actually played, like, a complete game. Um, I've also never played as the Confederate States. So we should have some fun. Let's go and jump on in. Hopefully we don't get any crashes or anything, because uh, this mod could be a little bit tricky. It's it's sometimes glitchy. I, I think we'll be okay, but it, it just it can get glitchy a little bit, so... Let's come on out here. Let's take a look here. United States of America. All right. So we have a 40.2% literacy. Let's see. 7.55 research points per day. Um, we're just going to go through all these tabs, actually. So we're 16th in the world in military power. Let's take a look here. We have a bunch of factories. We're going to go ahead and subsidize all factories. We can actually build some, some more factories. Uh, what do we produce? We produce some guns, some canned food. Uh, let's see. A little bit of iron, a little bit of copper here, some coal, which is really good. 100... 12.2 units of labor or uh, timber timber lumber. I guess you would say um, Let's see our five most produced goods are grain timber canned food cotton and lumber and then we export Looks like we mostly export grain timber and cotton and then we import canned food lumber and artillery, which is weird Okay, let's go and take a look at the budget We're gonna put all the tax sliders to the top so we can tax everybody it looks like we have 34% of our middle class not getting any needs but That's okay. We're gonna turn off the tariffs a little bit Okay, um, let's take a look here. Everything's good there. Let's take a look at research. So I like to focus on culture and uh, commerce and industry. In the in the beginning, we have business schools and tycoon capitalism as our uh, research school, which means that army tech and navy tech research declines, but commerce and industry are better. Uh, we get a 15% tech buff to commerce and industry tech is 5%. Okay. Why don't we go with introspectionism? No, uh, actually, I think I'll go for the... Yeah, let's go for the mechanized mining. Coal production, uh, copper, and lead production plus 50%. Let's do that. So, we have the, uh, so the year 1821, as the, um, as the intro said, basically, Napoleon has died. So, Napoleon Bonaparte is dead, and, uh, whoopsies, had to turn on the, uh, turn down the mic there. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, kind of weird. Sometimes I just have to mess around with the microphone. It's like, it's, it's really I iffy sometimes, so I'm just trying to keep it on it. Okay, so um, Napoleon has died. We have France, the United Kingdom, Austria, Prussia, Spain, and Europe. The Ottoman Empire is going through some revolts. I believe the Greek War of Independence at this time. Some other people declare war, uh, wars of independence as well. Egypt um, is here in the Sudan, and they're conquering Sudan. This is uh, Egypt is being ruled by Muhammad Ali. He, he was an Albanian, and he uh, basically took over Egypt and made it independent of the Ottoman Empire. This is his expedition into Sudan. I think he sent his son into Sudan with an army, and they conquered Sudan. It was, it's quite a big realm. Uh, Brazil is still under the empire of the Portuguese. Um, the Portuguese empire, although usually Brazil does break away. Um, Grand Colombia is over here, ruled by Simone Bolivar. Uh, basically, Spanish America is still going through its wars of independence. Um, let's see. We have some stuff here in... This is Ecuador right here. It looks like Spanish... Yeah, so this is this is the vice royalty of Peru. So Ecuador still belongs to the Spanish, as well as the vice royalty of Peru. Some of this is being occupied by Argentina, and Argentina was led by a man named Jose de San Martin. So um, 
Jose the San Martin, yeah, he was fighting uh, the basically the Chilean and the Argentinian War of Independence over here. There's this little dude of Paraguay over here is allied with Argentina. Um, we'll see what happens. Usually the Spanish do lose, so the Spanish usually do not survive. Uh, we have the United States of Central America. It was a federal republic over here, and these guys are they're at peace right now. They are a republic, but they usually split up into a bunch of little nations. Um, let's see. Spain still controls Cuba and Puerto Rico. We'd probably like to annex some of that territory. Um, we'll see what happens with Gran Colombia, actually, because historically, Gran Colombia, under Simone Bolivar, it actually conquered, like, an area. Basically, it, it stretched around this area, so Jose the San Martin pushed up to the north and was around here, and then Simone Bolivar and Gran Colombia actually pushed down south, and for reference, this area that was ruled by Simone Bolivar and the Gran Colombian Republic is, like, three times the size of Western Europe as far as landmass, so that's something, it, it you know, it was huge. So it, you can't really see it on this map, but this this right here, if you looked at this on a map, it was one of the largest contiguous realms in, in history. It was up there with like, like seriously, it was up there with like the Mongol Empire. It was, it was massive. It was a massive amount of territory. So let's go and take a look here. We have some uh, some decisions. The rights of man. A recognition has begun among our people of the basic fundamental rights that all humanity shares. This gives us prestige. Let's do it. Let's take a look. Land of Opportunity. We can get Land of Opportunity, Population Growth, plus 0 0.02, and then Immigrant Attraction. Um, yeah, we'll take that. I'm pretty sure there's not a reason not to take that. We are a land of the free and the home of the brave, a bastion of democracy in the world, and a haven for its poor and dispossessed. Um, there's a Statue of Liberty here, but the Statue of Liberty was not here in 1821, but, you know. Um, honestly, large-scale immigration to the United States did not begin until, like, the 1830s, 1840s, um, but that's fine. So in 1821, um, the Democratic Republican Party was in power in the United States. It was under President James Monroe, who was president from 1817 to, I believe, 1825. So right now we're in what's called the era of good feelings, where basically the, um, the Democratic Republican Party here in the United States doesn't have any political rivals. So uh, that's cool. Yeah, these guys, what's their policies, actually? Let's take a look at the, uh, the Democrats here. Free trade interventionism moralism limited citizenship and anti-military okay interesting um <clears throat> let's go take a look here so what i'd like to do in the beginning of the game is boost dem uh, bureaucrats because we need some money as soon as we unpause we will uh, see that we need some money let's take a look here we can colonize some stuff we can move some settlers west which we will do. We're going to have to oppose the Mexican Empire, um, which I will talk about in just a second. Let's take a look at those guys. Uh, so the Mexican Empire over here, it's the year 1821. The Mexican Empire has just gotten independence from Spain. Uh, they fought a war of independence from 1810. The real fighting kind of ended around 1815, 1816 or so, but, you know, 1821 is when Spain officially recognized that there was an empire of Mexico here that was independent. They were ruled by an emperor. His name is Agustin Iturbide. And um, he was he was only in power for like a year or so. He was really, really incompetent and kind of like an authoritarian. People saw him as like a tyrant. So, you know, they uh, they got rid of him. Um, so they, they dismantled the monarchy of Mexico and then they ended up putting in a republic. But the republic was kind of authoritarian in itself. And there was a guy by the name of... Um, Santa Ana, who was frequently kind of like a dictator in, in, in Mexico, so we'll probably see some of him during uh, the 1830s. Let's see, I got a question in the Twitch chat. Uh, what's the timeline for this game? So this is a mod. Uh, we're playing with a Concert of Europe mod, if you guys did not know that. This is the Concert of Europe mod for Victoria 2, and so this game stretches from 1821 to 1936, if I remember. So it's usually 1836 to 1936, but we're not, we're not doing that. We have uh, about an extra 15 years or so which can make all the difference in the world. So I want to form the Confederate States and the Confederate States do not have cores on this territory yet. They will in the future. Um, but basically, to my knowledge, when the Civil War in the United States kicks off, when the, when the Civil War kicks off, basically, troops from like your army depending on where they come from will take loyalties to either the regular united states which is the north or these confederate states which is the south so preferably when we recruit troops we want to have troops that are in the southern culture rather than the northern culture and there actually is a distinction 
So in the north, there's usually like Native American miners and then Yankee culture. Uh, you know, it looks like, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants from like New York and stuff. And then in the south, there's actually slaves, which are Afro-Americans or African-Americans. And then we also have the Dixie culture, which is like white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, but from the south. So we want to recruit troops from down here, never from up here. So that when we declare the Civil War, you know, we can just basically invade the north really easily. So let's find out what troops are from where. So we have two troops. We have some Texan soldiers from Louisville and then we have some Yankees. So we want to get we want to keep the Texans. We want to get rid of the other guys, though, um, so that they will go unemployed and they will switch away from being Union soldiers. Texas soldiers from Louisville. So let's go with those guys. They're the 8th Regiment. Yeah, so the 8th Regiment we can keep. We can get rid of the other two. Let's get rid of these guys. These are Dixie, Yankee, 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 Yankee. Okay. Let's grab those Dixie soldiers from Washington. Send them south. We'll disband the rest. We should be cautious because this could leave us at a severe disadvantage, but I think we'll be okay for the most part. And uh, do I need to do anything else? We probably... No, I think that's everything. I think we're okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and unpause. Let's see. Welcome to Concert of Europe. The nation of the United States is currently suffering from a bug occurring when releasing Canadian states, not Canada itself. Oh, okay. Interesting. Some sort of bug. Yeah, like I said, this game could be buggy, so we just need to be careful. Our population appears to be increasing. We have population growth plus 0.01. .01. Good. We have a competent placeholder as the first minister. Okay. <laughs> Basically, the uh, secretary of state or I get, well, not necessarily president. He's not president per se. He might be like secretary of state or something or something or another. Let's see, conservatives in Kentucky? Ooh, all right. So, let's see, Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was an informal network run by abolitionists of varying creeds and colors, dedicated to helping slaves uh, escape from the southern slave states to freedom in the north. So we can shut it down and make people more liberal, which would push them towards being more like Whig and Republican and free soil, or we can leave it be, which just gives Louisiana local militancy. Let's leave it be for now. Yeah, let's see here. I got a comment in the Twitch chat from Willie Are. Uh, he presumes that I am a history major in university. <laughs> no, I'm actually a political science major. <laughs> yeah, I'm a politics major. Uh, public listed companies. A fledging stock and bond market has been introduced to the United States. Ooh, bull market. Cool. Good stuff. So this is, these are all Dixie soldiers. That's good. We'll leave them, I guess, over here in New Orleans and like around there. Let's find out what's going on with Mexico. Keep an eye with them. Uh, we have a population of 10 million people. So this is 2.5 million adult males, but our actual whole population is 10 million, which is fairly large for this time period. Uh, Al Claire, let's see. Where's that? Take a look here. What is in Al Claire? What do we produce? Grain? We could switch it to timber? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So, we're going to move some colonies to the west. We're going to go ahead and send settlers to the west. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's take a look here. We're losing some money, but the... Yeah, so the, the bureaucrats should get us some money once there's enough of them. Let's see. Fugitive slaves. Let's see. Jesus is a Slav is now flying on Twitch. Thank you so much. Let's see, Fugitive Slave. Where am I? He wakes up screaming. Upon being told that he was found collapsed just a few yards north across the border, he starts laughing. What the hell? <laughs> okay, so some of the guys trying to escape across from south to north of the Mason-Dixon line. The law is the law. We could send him back, or he stays in the north, which makes people more conservative. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, I guess we want people to be conservative. So let's take a look here at your population. So we've got mostly Yankees, some Dixies, pretty huge demographic, you know, problems. 43% um, farmers, a lot of laborers, actually, quite a bit, 29.19%. We have uh, mostly Protestants, some Catholics, dominant issues of slavery. Um, our electorate is mostly Democratic, and the Democratic are mostly conservatives right now, the Democratic Republicans. The, uh, the liberals will be the Whigs, and then the reactionaries will be the Southern Democrats. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. 
Let's see here. Panamanian nationalists have enforced their demands on Spain. Release Panama. Ooh. Let's see. Copperheads. So the Copperheads were a group of Democrats in the northern United States who, during the Civil War, opposed the war and favored a peace settlement with the South. The moniker came originally from Unionists, likening them to poisonous snakes. But it soon struck home with the Copperheads themselves. Let's see here. There is staunch resistance to abolitionism within some Democratic circles. So I'm assuming the Copperheads are those guys, which they are. So we can make people reactionary, which, so there's a difference between conservatives and reactionaries. So conservatives in this time period would have been people like Thomas Jefferson, um, James Madison. I mean, they were actually fairly liberal because they, they really did like Republican government and things, but they were fairly liberal be, uh, or also fairly conservative because they didn't really want to, you know, do stuff that would anger people who supported slavery. Um, whereas people like Whigs and, and Free Soilers and, you know, all of those guys, they favored abolitionism, you know, uh, people like Henry Clay and, and stuff like that. So there's a difference between having reactionaries in power and having conservatives in power. So I guess for us, because we want to be like super duper like Confederate, we're going to want to support reactionaries rather than conservatives per se. So we'll see where that happens. We are losing some cash. Hmm. Yeah. Um, also, just, just as a disclaimer, I don't think this is going to be a problem in this campaign or anything like that, but I am not supportive of anything that, like, has to do with the Confederacy. Because, <laughs> like, depending on where you are in the United States today, there's actually a lot of people who, like, support the Confederacy, like, secessionist sentiment and stuff. I am not one of those people, so hopefully you do not get that from this, this campaign. I do like to roleplay a little bit, but I'm no, my, I'm in no means supportive of, you know, like, Confederate nationalism and separatism and secessionism and slavery and you know white nationalism and shit because <laughs> all that shit is very real there's a lot of people who do support that kind of stuff um like even even things like confederate you know regalia and symbolism and stuff and, and flags and things uh in the south means quite a bit to people depending on where you are like i'm in california you know i'm over here in california like you can't just wave around you know confederate flags and shit like you could get in some serious social trouble for doing things like that but over here in the south like a lot of these state flags and stuff have confederate banners and and have flags that date back from the confederate times so it's different it's different depending on where you are in the united states it's a very touchy subject um according to the constitution of the united states you have the right to believe in you know confederate ideology and confederate sympathies and shit it's just you can't Declare independence from the United States. <laughs> you know, you can't succeed, man. <laughs> so let's go and take a look here. Uh, can I colonize some more? I'd like to. Let's push up in here. This is Wyoming right here. Ooh, we need more colonial power. Mm -hmm. we'll keep an eye on it, see what we can do. So we want to grab some more. These are a lot of Yankees. We'd like to grab some more Dixie troops. We want to avoid recruiting the Yankees. So that they will be unemployed and will switch to another occupation, but we can recruit Dixie troops. That's preferably what we would want. Yeah. So we're just going to let time go by here. Speed 5 is is probably the fastest, you know, that we should go. We should be at speed 5 for a lot of the, a lot of the game. Speed 4 is, is, it's good for wars, but it's very, very slow just for regular events. It's really slow. I mean, we'll, we will be here for days on speed four so i'd rather just keep things moving there's a lot of initial development a lot of stuff the game needs to calculate in these first few years before we go back to speed four you know let's see the underground railroad we'll go ahead and just leave it be because it makes people mad and i like it when people are mad so we're gonna get bureaucrats in new york and pennsylvania all right <clears throat> We can increase the sphere uh increase our opinion with uh the usca I think they might be going to war with Mexico. They actually are at war with Mexico. Mexico's probably trying to annex them. So that'll probably happen. Let's see. The establishment of Liberia. In the early 1820s, a number of American colonization societies established outposts on the uh, outposts on the pepper coast of Africa, to which they encouraged freed American slaves to remove themselves. Yeah, we wish them well. So basically, Liberia gets established over here. Um, Liberia at this time was not a positive place to go to. Um... It was frequently seen as a way of like just shipping off African Americans to places so that you wouldn't have to deal with them. It wasn't really, you know, out of benevolence that Liberia was established. It's a dark period of American history. Liberals in New York. Ooh. 
New York is a liberal stronghold. Curious. So we have a lot of conservatives and reactionaries, a couple of them, in the upper house. Let's go and take a look here. We can encourage bureaucrats somewhere else now. Massachusetts and Ohio. Let's do it. All right. Hey, we can uh, do some more stuff over here. Wisconsin? Where's Wisconsin? Where the hell is Wisconsin, actually? What's over here? Uh, Wisconsin granted statehood. Another astounding victory for the United States of America today. We have a new state. We could extend slavery, or we could create a free state. I will extend slavery then, if we're going to be uh, confederates. Yeah. Let's take a look here. We just got mechanized mining. We should get introspectionism for education efficiency. It's going to help us out. Let's do it. Let's see. Greece goes bankrupt. We just got shaft mining, coal production, copper, and lead. Okay. Uh, do we have some money? Can we support some of these factories? I'd like to industrialize pretty early on. We have a very, very literate population. 40% at this time is really not bad. Uh, intensive farming? Yeah, it's unwise to do intensive farming usually. We should just let the land be, be how it is. Let's take a look here. We can create a protectorate over here. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, we're gonna want to we're gonna want to kind of cut off the uh, the Mexican Empire. Make sure they don't expand too much to the north. I'd rather that we get to California sometime, Sacramento around there, um, before or they do. That'd be very nice. Let's take a look here. I could build some more ships. I can probably build some more mana wars. Actually, I think we'll go ahead. Let's get a rally point. Let's go and combine these fleets. Let's get a rally point in Washington and I think in New Orleans. And that should be okay. So we have artillery and uh, regulars. We need some more infantry. Let's grab... Do we have... What is this fleet? This is 11, 9, and 3. 11 Man of Wars, 9 light ships, and 3 transports. So let's grab 7 clippers. And we'll grab some Man of Wars. And I could have grabbed some frigates. I guess we'll grab a couple. It's, good. it's kind, of, kind of expensive, but that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, we're just going to let some time tick, tick by, you know. Um, wow, it's already been 22 minutes in this episode. Jesus. Let's see. Let's just keep... Ooh, demand concession cast this belief against Burma was detected by the UK. Portugal, Brazil goes bankrupt. Really? I can add Portuguese Brazil to the... Uh, <laughs> to the uh, to my sphere of influence. We're a great power now. We're eighth in the world, which is pretty cool. All right. Let's keep investing here for now. We got some ships that are coming online. Take a look here, Dixies. I could use probably some cavalry. Let's grab a couple cav. And we need we need more Dixie troops. So after we get basically our economy up and running, we're gonna have to support troops from the southern United States pretty heavily. We're gonna have to encourage soldiers down there pretty heavily. Massachusetts has enough bureaucrats. Yeah, because we're gonna need more troops from the south than the north. So we'll see how that goes. I don't even know how the Civil War happens, so we'll keep an eye on it. Colonial Corruption. Mm. We will blame big industry for our colonial problems. <laughs> more reactionaries, more liberals, less conservatives. Scary. Hey, it's a crisis. Crisis of the liberation of the Empire of Brazil. Ooh. Uh, I do not want to back that. Are you serious? Whoa. Brazil's independent. Holy shit. The end of the United Kingdom of the Brazil... Uh, Portugal, Brazil, and the Agarves. Yeah. Brazil's won his independence, and the Portuguese Empire's lost its crowning jewel. Jesus, man. That's crazy. That's kind of cool. Interesting. Okay, let's grab, yeah, let's grab this territory and let's grab Nevada. Can I? Do we have enough, do we have enough power for that? They, come on, man. They got some, they got some iron over here. They got some stuff that I want. Look at our name. It's going to be massive. Um, So basically in this campaign also, you know, we're not just going to be the Confederate States of America. We're going to be like an authoritarian, like United States. So probably we're going to go to war quite a bit and fighting people. So it's going to be fun. Um... 
Yeah, we'll leave it be. We'll probably invade for Cuba. We'll probably take Puerto Rico. Um, I think maybe there will be a Mexican-American war after we take Texas. We can we can advance into Mexico and probably annex all of Mexico. I would love to do that because we need to extend slavery. Workshop of the world in the United Kingdom. So it should be fun. Uh, let's take a quick look. Any more Dixie troops? We've got some Dixie artillery. Let's grab that. Um, in theory, what I probably could do is actually use Yankee troops and then just disband them before the Civil War. But I don't. You never know when the Civil War, I guess, is going to kick off. There's certain little buildups and signs, but I don't know. Let's see. Wanted a statewide manhunt has been called in. Yeah, we'll search high. Uh, introspectionism, we just got done. Let's go for alphabet uh, signaling. Supply range plus 100%. Our navy is going to be pretty important. We're going to need a really strong navy for this game. Yeah. We just got culture level 1. A book is like a garden carried in a pocket. Research points. Ooh, yes, beautiful. Let's take a look here. Ohio, you've got enough bureaucrats. Let's take a look at Virginia. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Like I said, I don't know what's going to happen with the Civil War. I, I don't really know how it's all supposed to work out. Um, you know, I, I definitely do need to have a strong military. So if it's necessary that I need to raise more troops, then I will. Um, you know, I just would prefer that we have Dixie troops so that if the Civil War does fire, the Union doesn't have any troops in the field at all. They'd have to recruit them really fast. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let's go to Nevada. We need more military points, dammit. Or colonial points. Give me more. American Arizona. Let's take a look here. Wow, we have really good population growth, dude. Holy shit. Let's actually check, take a look at how many people are coming to our country. Uh, mostly from France. Yeah, that's cool. France at this time was under the Bourbons, the restored Bourbons. They didn't, they didn't stay that way for too long, though. Life without parole. Imprisonment for life without the possibility of parole is not an uncommon punishment in the United States of America. Uh, there should be some prison reform, but for now, we'll stick to the old ways. Prestige is pretty important in this game, so we'll go and grab some. Ooh, we have Jacobins rising up. That's curious. Really? Interesting. Wow, our electorate is 27.5% Southern Democrats. Holy shit. Colonial policy is debated. We will stick with the conservatives. Dixies? Dixie? Yeah, Dixie. Okay. Let's keep it on those rebels, huh? Segregation. Newly arrived immigrants in our provinces are finding it hard to assimilate into the broader American populace. They must be integrated by force if necessary, or some of the locals have the right idea. So we can segregate or no. Yeah, we will integrate by force if necessary. Probably, I'm thinking, people like... The know nothings and the American Party and the nativists would have preferred segregation, but I don't know. Copperheads, um, yeah, reactionaries. Want to, we want to encourage the reactionaries. Treaty of London. <laughs> After weeks of negotiations, the Conference of Diplomats in London has reached a conclusion. Belgium's independence must be recognized. Dope. Look at Belgium. They're here. That's cool. Let's keep building some factories, shall we? Uh, the USCA wants an alliance, but they're at war with Mexico, so I will... Oh, no, they have a truce. Mm, I refuse. No. We're, gonna, we're just going to get dragged into some wars I don't care about. So, let's play our cards right, shall we? We should watch out for the British. We have decent relations with them. Uh, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Dixie? Dixie? No, no Dixie. We could create a protector in Nevada. Beautiful. Let's go for Sacramento. Yes, we've taken Sutter's Fort. Yeah, this is uh, 
Let's see, Copperheads. I actually live in Sacramento, California. I live near here. I won't tell you exactly where, but um, this this place is actually was not originally called Sacramento under the Spanish. It was actually called Sutter's Fort, but I guess a guy named John Sutter or some shit founded Sacramento or something. Anger against the government. Ooh, son of a bitch. We just, got some, we just got some alphabet signaling. Let's go for military staff system. Beautiful. Immigration problems. Residential policies debated in local elections. So everybody supports limited citizenship or residency. We'll go for the limited citizenship if we have to. I have not yet begun to fight John Paul Jones. Let's see, made in where foreign goods. So this is a protectionist campaign? We will support the protectionists, I think. Yeah. Protectionism is the way to go. Let's see. National debate trade policy. Our trade must be protected from destructive foreign competition. Um. So the Democrats, their, their Democratic Republicans support interventionism. The Whigs like laissez-faire, which is such bullshit because they really didn't. The Whigs actually liked state capitalism. They wanted, you know bridges and roads and factories and shit. So this is kind of weird. The Democrats actually kind of supported more laissez-faire, I guess you would say, than the Whigs probably did. The Southern Democrats supported state capitalism, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me actually at all. But, I mean, state capitalism is the way to go. So we'll take that policy. Let's see. Here we got to change our bureaucratic focus. We're making serious cash now, which is really good. We should probably stop with the tariffs so that we're not taking any... Um, We're not, we're not hurting our factories because we need raw materials from a lot of different places. In fact, in history, the South disliked protectionism, but the North liked it. So that was a problem. But we will stick with protectionism. Yeah, because uh, slavery and, and goods and stuff was a problem when we had, um, we had tariffs. One faith and one faith only. Uh, let's take here. Plans, economies, and freedoms debated. How the hell are we going to have planned economy, man? That's like not until later in the game. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, we're getting some more boats. So hopefully we can grab some more colonial points. Let's take a look here. Yes, protectionist campaign. We will support it wholeheartedly. Let's take a look here. We want to go for colonial. Uh, yep, more colonies, please. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you bastard. You took Sacramento. <gasps> you son of a bitch. I'll have to kick his ass. Peru went bankrupt. Is Peru independent now? Ooh, almost. Limited citizenship's gonna be fine. Limited citizenship until proven and loyal subject. I agree. Who's forming up? Jacobins? Jesus Christ, 400,000 Jacobins. We're gonna have some serious issues. We are patriots. We will fight for our country. Yeah, a coalition of conservatives and reactionaries are in power. The Whigs are in power by 40.56, the Democrats by 60%. Okay. The American people have spoken. A lot of people are subordinate, insubordinate. Liberals, yeah, they're not too great. Although they do have a large electorate population, actually. That could be a problem for us in the near future. 400,000 Jacobins are at risk of rising up here, man. Ooh. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break here, and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this campaign. I am really excited for this campaign. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.